Russia is planning its own orbital space station after the retirement of the International Space Station, but will it ever actually launch or will it remain just a paper project? Show me the money. That's basically what it comes down to. Russia is losing a tremendous amount of money, and this is even nothing new. Russia's budgets have been cut for its space program, and it has undergone significant challenges in terms of corruption in its space agency. It will be an uphill battle for Russia to even get its first module launched before 2030, before the International Space Station retires. So if it does manage to have its own orbital space station in low Earth orbit, it will probably be after the International Space Station retires. I'm Lara Forsick. I'm the executive director of space consulting firm Astrolytical. And so I track in detail the commercial space stations that are currently planned to operate after the International Space Station retires. Commercial space stations aren't the only space stations out there of course. In fact, just today I was speaking to a reporter about the options, including the Chinese space station that's already up there, the Indian space station that is currently under development, the Lunar Gateway, which I have talked about in the past. I can link that video above, as well as Russia's plans to create its own. It goes by the English name Russian Orbital Station or Russian Orbital Servicing Station. ROS is the acronym. I've been tracking this for a few years now, and my assessment as to whether it will become a reality has declined over the past two and a half years due to geopolitical factors. However, I do want to talk about the fact that it might actually become a reality at some point in the next few years and what that might look like, because it's certainly not going to look like how Russia is currently planning. An article was published today by Ars Technica, which quoted the deputy director of Roscosmos, the Russian space agency, Andrei Yelchinov. Forgive my mispronunciations throughout this whole video, I'm sure. But he is quoted in a translation of saying, I would remind you that contract cancellations by unfriendly contracts cost Roscosmos 180 billion rubles, or $2.1 billion in that conversion. That is how much the sanctions or the canceled contracts between Russia and the Western countries has cost Russia after Russia invaded Ukraine. So you might remember after that invasion, there were significant step backs in terms of how much Europe and other countries were willing to work with Russia. The United States also stepped back a little bit, but is still cooperating with Russia on the International Space Station. That's a whole other video as to why. What we saw was a lot of cancellations in terms of use of Russian rockets, not complete cancellations because we are expecting Don Pettit to launch with a Russian Soyuz very soon on an expedition to the International Space Station. But a lot of the contracts that were given to Russian rockets were moved to other rockets. Later on the video, I'll talk about the fact that they have been experiencing financial problems for a while now, which is why I've been watching this for several years, and none of this is, is unexpected. Before I go into that, I want to talk about the Russian space station concept itself, because I don't know how many people are even aware that it exists. And of course, it's just a paper project at this moment. There is hardware. And that's something that I don't think most people know about, is there's actual hardware that could maybe launch or may never launch. I guess we'll find out someday. The concept for a Russian-specific space station after the ISS actually stems back about a decade to 2014. They called it, and this is a automatic translation from Russian to English, so I don't know if this is a perfect translation, but the name of that concept was High Latitude National Station. A lot of this information comes from an article from N plus one, which I will link below. Again, it's in Russian, so you'll need to translate it unless you speak Russian. That space station concept was envisioned to launch in 2019, and then Russia would step back from the ISS partnership in 2020. And in fact, the ISS partnership has been in danger of being cut off by Russia for a number of years, for, for quite some time. Uh, 2020, 2024, 2025, 2026, to now it's up to 2028 is how long Russia has extended the ISS partnership. And it's likely that they will extend it to 2030, but it's not guaranteed that it will be extended to 2030 on the Russian side. And if you remember, it's a partnership where NASA is the primary partner and the primary funder, but Russia by design was created as a crucial partner in the ISS project. But back to the history of this orbital station, obviously they did not withdraw in 2020. In 2015, just a year later, the date had already slipped to 2023. And then that concept was sort of shelved and was resurrected in 2020 as the Ross. This is the initial concept of what it would look like, what this Ross would look like as of 2021. At that point, they planned to launch the first module in 2025 and have the first expedition a year later in 2026. I also want to 
put up here some artwork by Anatoly Zak, who is an excellent space reporter. This is his artwork from 2020. And so I will link to that below, to his website below. In January of 2023, the date had slipped for that first module to be launched in 2027. And then just recently, back a month and a half ago in July, the head of the Russian space agency, Yuri Borisov, he announced that the core of the ROS, the first four modules, would all be launched by 2030. I wish I could give you the actual wording of what Roscosmos put out there, but the Roscosmos website is actually blocked. So I will link a number of articles down below where they reported on what Roscosmos was saying. In July, Roscosmos was saying that it would launch the initial scientific and energy module in 2027, and three more modules would be added by 2030, and then a further two more between 2031 and 2033. And all of this is complete fantasy. I would be surprised if it launches even one module by 2030 at the rate it's going. It does actually have one module built. It's the NEM, the Science Power Module, so that's SPM, also known as the NEM or NEM-1. And this was built for the International Space Station. That is why it exists. It was built like, I don't know, something like 15 years ago and just was never launched. So it has been going through some redesigns. According to one source, NEM is one of the largest modules in the history of Russian cosmonautics. The volume is 92 cubic meters. Because Russia does have this hardware already built and because presumably it has gone through upgrades, then I actually think there is a small chance that the NEM could be launched within a few years. The NEM, of course, is just the start. If Roscosmos is saying that it wants to to launch the four core components by 2030, it has to build these other components, which is not very realistic, but here's what these other components are. Ross is actually envisioned to include up to seven modules, with 2035 being the targeted completion date. And so those first four, that core, is the NEM-1 module, an upgraded NEM, a node module, and a gateway module. The projected cost of ROS, and I don't know if this is the four core modules or the seven modules or what this cost is, but it is projected to be 609 billion rubles, roughly $6.7 billion. And that sounds like a lot of money, but that actually sounds like an underestimation to me, just based on how much it costs to build the International Space Station. Although that figure alone already seems cost prohibitive for Russia at this time, because Russia has been going through significant financial challenges for years. Years. It has been underpaying its staff. So it has actually lost quite a bit of its qualified staff. It doesn't have that many people left within Roscosmos that are qualified to build space hardware, to build the Russian space station, because they've been underpaying their people. There's been significant corruption. For example, in December 2023, it was reported that the deputy director of Roscosmos, Oleg Frolov, and two other suspects were accused of large-scale fraud over a suspected embezzlement of roughly translate, uh, converted to $4.7 million. And then back in 2021, the Kremlin estimated that 11 billion rubles out of 91 billion rubles, 11 billion rubles is roughly $150 million. That much money was embezzled from the Vostovny Cosmodrome. And according to that article, several officials involved in the project were jailed. That's not the extent of the corruption there. Those are just two articles from you know the past couple of years, the past few years that uh, just stuck out to me. So not only is money being stolen, money's also being cut from Roscosmos. Back in October 2021, an article reported that Russia plans to slash funding for spaceflight activities during the coming three-year period from 2022 to 2024, about 16% annually. And then the news that came out recently that Russia has lost roughly $2.1 billion due to the war that they started in Ukraine. The one area where the Russian government seems to be putting money back into space, aside from like cyber warfare and that kind of thing, is the communications mega constellation that they want to build that is in competition, in a sense, with Starlink and OneWeb and some of these other Western uh, constellations. They want to launch a couple thousand satellites up in orbit, and they're actually putting money towards that. So that is one area where Russia is seeing the importance of putting money in its space program. But that tells me that it does not see that it's very important to build its own Russian space station. Now, it could be that Russia changes its mind and decides that for geopolitical you know, national pride purposes, that it is going to put a lot more money into the human spaceflight program of Russia and start to actually build this Russian space station so that it can have a Russian space station after the ISS retires. What is Russia going to do with its cosmonauts after the ISS retires or after it leaves the ISS partnership for that matter? Well, it has a close-ish relationship with China. China has said that it is open to 
international partners traveling to its space station. However, it has not done so yet. It's not opened up yet. So far, only Chinese astronauts, taikonauts, have been on the Chinese space station. India is developing its own space station, but I see no indication that Russia would be involved in that. Russia is involved in the Chinese lunar program, so it could be that somewhere in the 2030s, we might actually see a Chinese-Russian expedition to the moon in their lunar orbit or lunar surface. Let me know if I'm missing something. Let me know in the comments if you think that there's still opportunities for Russian human spaceflight in the near future. And I'm not talking about like 2040 and beyond. I'm talking about, you know, the rest of the 2020s and the 2030s. What is to going to become of the human Russian space program after the ISS retires? Because right now it does not look like the Russian space station exists other than this module that was built for another purpose. As sad as it is to see, because Russia does have so such a rich history in human spaceflight. At the same time, I, I can't feel bad because they started a war in Ukraine. All the other problems with corruption, I mean, like, I just, I can't feel too much sympathy for Russia at this time. And just perhaps it's the waves of history that come and go. And now is time for Russia to fade while others such as China, for example, start to climb.